AI in Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldus.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Narshad Uzaman. Narshad is the CTO and co-founder at Blackboard AI. Narshad, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, JP. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So let's jump straight into it. Can you start with yourself? Can you give us uh, some insight into your background, where you first got started in technology, and walk us through your journey, taking us up to your, your current role uh, as the, the co-founder of Blackboard? Oh, definitely. So it actually all started in Bangladesh, where I'm originally from. And during my junior year at Brack University in Bangladesh, my mentor and idol, Dr. Mumit Khan, received a funding to do research on Bangla language processing. So I wanted to learn everything as much as possible from him. So I joined the lab immediately so that I can get to learn more from him. And working on Bangla language processing was really exciting for me because first, it was learning about natural language processing while I was an undergraduate student. It's very exciting and challenging. It was almost 18 years back now you didn't have all those GitHub repos, archive papers like you have now. So it was more challenging, but it was still as exciting. But another byproduct of that was I was working for my native language, Bangla. And Bangla is the only language in the world for which people actually shed blood for, like people shed blood for land still to this date, but for language, it's not very common. So working for my language, native language was really a privilege for me that made me more excited to work in this space. And I continued working on it with Dr. Khan after my graduation for two more years, published a bunch of papers, co-taught a course on NLP with him. And really all these things hooked me into this space of natural language processing, data science. Then fast forward 10 years, I finished my PhD from University of Rochester with Dr. James Allen, worked in the research labs at Microsoft, Yahoo, Bosch, Nuance, published about 30 peer-reviewed research papers. So it was uh, in my 30s, early 30s, I've done all this. I felt like academically, I kind of have achieved what I wanted to achieve. And I felt like it was not enough or not exciting enough. And more importantly, I feel that I was not building something that can have significant positive impact. Mm -hmm. So that's when like I, I... really just didn't want to donate some money end of my life or while I'm working like during my lifetime. But I really wanted to do something, build something that would outlast me and have a positive impact to the society. So that's really what led to co-founding Blackbird. So talk to us about the, the formation of Blackbird, the the idea behind it and, and what the early days looked like. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So Going back to my Rochester life where I had my PhD, I met my co-founder Wasim Khaled, who was a a serial entrepreneur. And our family actually go uh, way back, more than 50 years. But I met him for the first time when I came to Rochester for my PhD. And we went to the same school, University of Rochester. So after my PhD, I left Rochester, uh, but we kept in touch and we wanted to build something together. And we were speedballing for a long time and contemplating like, How can we make something that would have positive social impact in the world using technology? So after a lot of thinking, we really came to realize that disinformation is one of the greatest existential threats of our time and shapes all other threats, right? So in 2017, we kind of spun up out of a Silicon Valley AI incubator to launch Blackbird AI. And it was not really an easy pitch in our early days as most of the people at that time did not see what we realized would would be such a big threat. So let's let's see a few examples from recent days. We are in the middle of this pandemic right now. One American is dying almost every 30 seconds, and we don't still have people following scientific guidelines, 
some basic things like wearing mask, even a lot of medical professionals, good amount, not a lot, but good amount of medical professionals uh, med uh, thinking of not taking vaccine. Think of the other people who are not even in this space. So this is such a big problem and it all is due to disinformation. Then you think of democracy. Without the information integrity, you don't have a dem democracy, right? So when the information integrity is lost, majority of the people is not going to come up with the right decision. You don't even need the majority. If you have a good amount of people who are brainwashed, that's that's risky for democracy. And that's exactly what happened last week. People want to overturn an election result because they have been fed that that election was stolen from them. And it's from the continuous uh, propaganda from some media outlet, some elected officials and online conspiracy platforms and also in action from the large social medias uh, like Facebook, for example, these are all this reason these propaganda, this disinformation has been spreading and we have such a big impact, like it's impacting our life. People are dying out of COVID. It's impacting our democracy. It's not the country that we want to live in. And this this is this is much more dangerous and have significantly more impact. So uh, but I mean, this is not new disinformation. It has been around for a long time. What is new is technology making it easier to share at scale. And we really think that the technology only can solve that. And that's really what Blackbird is trying to achieve. Yeah, absolutely. I think never in modern history has disinformation been more prevalent and obvious in, in society and the impact that it's have. Perfect segue into Blackbird. Explain what you're doing at Blackboard. What is the product? What are you trying to solve with this technology? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, before we actually talk about Blackbird, I would like the audience to think of this problem so they understand and appreciate better like what we are trying to do. So we are trying to, as I was saying, we want to be only technology in a way AI can solve this at a scale because of the scale of this disinformation propaganda campaign right now. So if you build an AI company that detects disinformation, just tells you it's a black box, tells you this is disinformation, this is a harmful post or not. That is not the solution that can be used. The problem is we are a divided society. You actually don't need a divided society. If you have, we don't want government to tell us what is right, what is wrong. We don't want big companies to tell us what is right, what is wrong. Then imagine how can people adopt to a solution that AI is telling you this is bad. You cannot trust that, right? So, and people, this the this is a data science, your audience are more into data science, understand AI. They understand there are bias in training data for AI. So if you build a classifier that tells you this is disinformation, the training data, majority of the training data that you will collect right now would be right leaning, uh, text. So what it would end up happening is being a very partisan classifier, which would have a lot of false positive and it would not get the adoption that you would want for a solution to have. And uh, so again, like it's not just an AI problem. It's a societal problem, political problem. It impacts everyone. So the way we have to think is getting out of the te technical problem and think what would be a solution that can be accepted by everyone. And with me and my co-founder, both brown Muslims, we also had to think more like uh, that there will be additional scrutiny on whatever we put because they, it would end up being that the founders, these brown Muslim founders came up with the solution, AI solution that's trying to, that's another disinformation or something, right? So we needed to build something. We wanted to build something that is objective that people can understand, okay, this is bad. I can disagree, but this is, I can see the proof point. This is why it is bad. So instead of a black box AI that gives you a prediction and a score, we wanted to build the explainable AI. So with showing objective points, like why it is bad. So people can understand better. And we also wanted to focus on what computers are good at. So the way we, we see the problem is a few examples we will try to identify how the content is being spread. 
is it pushed as a propaganda campaign? We can quantify that. We can see the spread of it, how it is being spread. Is it a propaganda campaign? We can show that. If the content has known disinformation, AI is not good at, humans are not even good at identifying if this, like if you show some disinformation to human and ask them, many humans cannot even identify that. So we are expecting to AI to identify that better than human, that's not going to work. But what AI is good at is matching, semantically matching this known disinformation at scale. It's a search engine, right? If we can yeah. build that, that would be, that's what AI is good at. And that's what we are trying to do and get humans to annotate those contents. We can also identify if it is shared by harmful bot. It's not just bot, but the bots that spread disinformation, the bots that spread toxic content. We can quantify those. We can show those why we are saying if the post has a URL or article that is sharing unreliable content, if it is shared by users who shares conspiracy theories. So these are the things that are more objective. We can explain why we say something is bad and we can show the receipt. We want to make it transparent so that we can earn the trust from the users that when we say something is bad, actually is bad, or they can dig through and I understand why we're saying it is bad. Makes absolute sense. And it's clearly a product that is, is in high demand and we need it as soon as possible. So talk to us about the growth from, from inception of the idea and the journey thus far over the past three years to, to where we're at. Give us some insight into how close we are to having this readily available for, for, for the masses. Yeah, so I mean, uh, <clears throat> When we started in uh, 2017, uh, it was not obviously as obvious for everyone that this is the product we need and uh, in the market, but now it is. Uh, but at that time, only national security was kind of like, oh, we started, we worked in stealth mode for, for about a year, year and a half. And then we started actually talking to national security clients and early 2020 this year, uh, last year, we actually landed some national uh, security clients and we started working with them. So our strategy really was that we go to the national security clients first because they understand the problem better than rest of the uh, segments at that time. And with that, we funded our company basically. And now we ourselves, like we are, we have revenue in the company. We have profit that we can sustain. Uh, for many months. So this is how we started. Now we are actually in talks with large companies, some household name companies, enterprise is next. And then uh, we are not going to the B2C, like the consumer product just yet. Our goal is work with the national security problem because this is a problem our national security needs the most, obviously we, we all need, but they need the most. So we, we plan to work with them and then in parallel, we want to penetrate the enterprise market. And then we also want to get into other verticals. We will uh, maybe in a, in a year or two, we will, or, or maybe sooner, we also want to work with large platforms so that it, it can reach to the average, like uh, everyday consumers uh, and, and uh, we, we can serve uh, as many people as we can. And in terms of uh, funding really as, as a company growth, we have about a, uh, Right, right now, about uh, 10, more than 10 people in our team from all over the country and the world. We have some presence in Asia. We have Asia team. We have a, uh, we have some people in Europe. We have some people uh, like uh, all, all over the world, really. Uh, and currently, we are raising a pre-seed A round, actually, uh, right now, uh, for like next four, six weeks. And we'll, we plan to close that uh, for um, as soon as possible. Nishad, this is a problem that we've known about in in one form or another for, for some time now. Um, and obviously big tech, um, big social media companies and other platforms are aware, but they still haven't solved it themselves. Uh, and they, despite some efforts, are still playing a significant role in the spreading of this information. So what can they do to, to play their part in solving this problem um, other than just blanket uh, banning individuals so i know it's quite a complex problem to solve but you're on the inside can you give us some insight into ways that you know tech companies and other organizations can make some steps to improve this themselves 
Yeah, definitely. I, I think uh, they played the biggest part in spreading, like for this problem where we are right now. And the reason for that is disinformation content always have significantly more engagement. What that means is it means it means more dollar for them. So they don't inherently have a motivation to solve this problem. You can see now they're removing a lot of bad actors. You don't want this censorship, but they're removing a lot of bad content, right? So that means they have the capability to do that. It's just that they decided not to act before. So, uh, but at the same, so that's number one point. Number two is you don't want censorship as well. Like they uh, removed some of the accounts in last past uh, week and for some time. Some of these are controversial, like you don't want that either. So how can they solve that? That's a really big question. And I might not be might not have the best answer, but I have some thoughts on this. Like we think about this problem and what we are trying to do is identify the harmful content, harmful users, right? Given you have that, what can you do? What can the platforms do with that? First thing is, how can we actually demotivate the platform to not to optimize on the engagement? Because that's what brings them money. How can we, what can we do to demotivate them? And uh, that's the uh, solution we need to, to solve this disinformation problem. And I think the solution is one, adding friction and two, monetizing this friction. So let me explain what I mean. Adding friction is instead of uh, like blanket blocking of account, if you add friction on the activity for the harmful content, the engagement on the harmful content will reduce significantly. If you share a post that has some harmful work and I want to share that post, and I have to do CAPTCHA or some work, like you're adding friction to my workflow of sharing this information, then I am probably not going to share that. So this information again is not new. It has been around for generations, hundreds of years, thousands of years. But early days, I had to drive, not drive or like go like 10 miles to spread that disinformation. That was blocking, that was a friction to share that disinformation. That's why I didn't share. Now I can just click one thing, it is sharing. So that's you add a friction to that action, it will reduce significantly. Next time, when a user tries to share, share a content of disinformation, you put more and more hurdle for them, and that will reduce their motivation to spread disinformation. Now, what is the motivation for platforms to do that? That still hurts their bottom line because they're reducing engagement. The answer to that is, monetizing the friction. Think of the CAPTCHA. We all know this is some boring, stupid thing that you have to do so that you pr prove that you're not a bot. But actually some, some of the CAPTCHA work, get some annotation for, for text, like, uh, like image to text OCR data. So they were collecting some data for that. If we can think of some smart ways of this work, like. AI companies, AI is the future. You need data. Get them to do some annotation work. It could be OCR. It could be for automated driving. You have to do something uh, like annotate some signal, like uh, this is a sign, this is a deer, this is that, this is dangerous, this is bad. And then obviously you run it through multiple people to validate this is good or bad. But you're adding the friction. You're monetizing the friction. So for the uh, social media companies, they can basically monetize out of that. Another thing, like uh, cryptocurrency has mining work. So basically think of those users who want to spread those content that you think is harmful as miner. They have to do some work to do that. So that means they have to probably stake some coin or something. So that means obviously uh, there can be organized effort to spread disinformation. They will put a lot of money. But the more higher the thing is, like it's it's not just you get to share the content. The social media platforms, when they know someone is pushing so much money, they can still say, like, oh, I'm not going to spread this because you're sharing the money. They can reduce the spread in many other ways. But adding those two ideas alone would have a huge impact. Absolutely. Yeah. So adding all these frictions and monetizing that friction, it basically works for the platform and we get a much cleaner feed 
uh, without this disinformation. Yeah. Um, so look, you, you've covered a lot already. You've talked about the problem, which I think if ever there wasn't time for everyone to be acutely aware of how bad disinformation can be to our society, it's now. Um, you've given us some insight into Blackboard are actively trying to solve the problem and, and how you're going about do, going about doing so. Talk to us now about the good side. You know, talk to us about what the journey has been like. You know, you and I have spoken previously about how Blackbird is such an incredible place to work. Tell us why and how you've gone about building the data team. First of all, really, like what I love working with this team that we have is the diversity. So we have, I was mentioning, we have people from all these different uh, countries working on it. So originally, I mentioned I'm from Bangladesh. We also have a team in Asia and Singapore. So you have people with a background or living in Asia. We have an analyst in England who actually worked. Uh, he, she did her master's in the U.S. She was in Middle East. And then she uh, has been around in all these different places. We have another developer who is originally from Morocco, trained in uh, France, now in New Jersey. So people and another person who is half uh, South African. So all these people with different background, this is a problem of not just one country or society. You need people background and insights from all these different people. And that's what really makes all these ideas that, that comes to us and we, we saw work on makes it really exciting and diverse place. You learn from everyone every day. And again, in terms of the background, it's not just computer scientists, uh, artificial intelligence researchers. We have a bunch of them and really good of them. Uh, all of them are really good. But it's it's like we have our team members uh, from working in the government, national security. We have one of our adv advisors is uh, was a CTO of uh, Department of Homeland Security. We have a uh, behavioral scientist uh, as advisor. She was a uh, uh, behavioral scientist for government agencies and stuff like that. So we get all these people with very different background, very different ideas that that melts here in Blackbird and really makes it a great place to work on. And the other big important thing is the mission driven, like everyone is allied on the mission that we are doing something bigger than us, bigger than life. Like we are trying to solve that impacts the society, all of us and our future generations. So that really excites a lot of people and uh, that really you don't get like if you're working on a problem that is not exciting, if it is not exciting, it's hard to attract good talent. And uh, so that that really excites me, excites us on, on working with this and why it makes it a really good place to yeah. work on. And look, you, you touched on it earlier um, about the expected upcoming round of funding, uh, exciting growth in store. Can you give us some insight into some of the exciting projects and, and when this next wave of funding comes in? What what growth opportunities uh, do you expect for people interested in working in this space? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we are working on a bunch of these uh, exciting things that we uh, I mentioned earlier. Like one is quantifying propaganda. We have some quantification. You guys uh, and anyone can see to Blackbird. Uh, go to Blackbird. Uh, AI and and check some of the reports we published for COVID. You can see some uh, metric called Blackbird Manipulation Index. So that's where we are trying to identify, uh, quantify the propaganda. To solve the problem, you need to quantify first. So that's that's uh, what the work. It's an ongoing work. We're improving on that. Uh, index. Another work that I mentioned was matching semantically to known disinformation. It's basically search engine to match. Like you need to have really high accuracy on that and also need to do it at scale. That's another one. Another project we are working on is scalable automated narrative generation. So at scale, we can see monitor like how something is okay. These are the narrative that are spreading that COVID vaccine. Uh, uh, the RNA changes the DNA, COVID vaccines, RNA changes the DNA of people. You stim like a lot of this known hoaxes that we know, we can see like when this was formed, like what, how it was spreading. Like we can, we want to automatically cluster those narrative at scale and find out when some narrative are forming and, and find out what's happening. So that these are the few projects that we are working on. After our fundraising, the goal really is like we have a lot of interest from uh, 
big name clients that we it is hard for a small team uh, 10 plus people that we have to serve all these our national security clients and all these new new clients everything they want is in our roadmap we are working towards that but obviously we want to expedite that process so the fundraising and hiring for the next phases is really to expedite those work and scale the system like everything that we build we are trying to build for internet scale it's not that like if you have some disinformation you have a report after two weeks that doesn't help anyone like we we see how fast things move like uh, last week uh, on this capital raid we saw like how fast everything moves how fast people have to react so this is really the real time uh, near real time system scalable system that we, what we are working towards Excellent. Uh, final question from me, Nashad. Um, you've answered, the, answered this to me previously in a private conversation, but look, it, it's been an exciting three years for you. What are you loving most about the work that you're doing? Clearly, the, the, the mission is is obvious and the work is so important, but what have you enjoyed most about the, the last three years and, and what are you looking forward to most? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the satisfaction. Like, uh, <clears throat> As I was saying that after my PhD working as a research scientist, I, I mean, I, I thought that was when I was an undergraduate student. I, I thought that's really what I want with my life and have a happy life. But after I finished achieved those, I felt like my life was not fulfilling enough. Like I did not feel that I was utilizing my uh, my talent, my resources that I have, the things that I can do the best way. I could do more like I, I I I don't want to, for example, optimize the ad for large companies that does not make me feel that I am doing the best with the life I have uh, and the resources I had, like not everyone had the background as I I had, but I can do more with that. So this is really now what I love about my job is the impact. I feel that this will have a positive impact to the society. It will help future generations and this is actually not the problem that we can uh, solve ourselves like it's a, it's a, such a big problem and to end really uh, I, I I would say that we need more people working on it like it's a it's a great problem obviously we understand this is a very challenging problem but it's not something that only one small company can do we have competitors that is good because that's a problem that many companies should solve, should tackle. And uh, we want more people, smarter people to work on this. And uh, if and we are we are growing, we're looking for great developers and investors who share this vision and aligns with our mission, like uh, definitely feel free to reach out to us. And we definitely want to build a work towards a better society together. Excellent one, Nashad. We, we wish you all the best with this venture incredibly important work obviously very exciting for what's in store and how you can have an impact on such important topics we look forward to to keeping track and, and wish you all the best with, with everything at blackbird thank you so much thank you so much jp it was really a great pleasure talking to you and uh, to your audience today ai in action is brought to you by allus international covering your business's staffing consulting and networking needs allus offer an exec search program all this can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all its members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career and more. Become an Aldis member and get the Aldis advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldis.com. That's www.aldis.com. Aldis International, empowering through AI.